today's video we'll be talking about myocarditis. So this is where we have inflammation of the heart muscle. We've mentioned in previous videos that there are several layers to the heart including the endocardium, myocardium and the pericardium. So myocarditis is the inflammation of the myocardium layer. Now there's various reasons that this can occur. So the most common cause is due to some kind of infection. So some of the methods of infection could be viral, so it's due to some kind of virus. These include viruses like rubella, polio, HIV, and the Coxsackie virus, which can all cause myocarditis. Other causes can be protozoan, so this can be like Trypanosoma cruzi, which cause Chagas disease, or it could be from Toxoplasma gondii, which is from cats. Uh, a bacterial infection can also cause can also cause myocarditis. So this could be from the Brucella bacteria. It could be from Mycoplasma pneumoniae. A fungal infection could also be another cause. So this could be from Aspergillus, or it could be from some kind of parasite like Trichinella spiralis. We've just mentioned all the infectious causes of myocarditis, but myocarditis also can be non-infectious. So this could be from intake of certain toxins like drugs, alcohol, or it could be due to uh, certain chemotherapy agents. Uh, it could also be immunologic, so it can happen after a heart transplant that the body rejects the new graft and then we have myocarditis as a result. Or it could be due to autoantigens, so the body is technically attacking its own cells and as a result we have myocarditis. Now let's look at the signs and symptoms of myocarditis. So these include chest pain, palpitations, fever, sudden death may occur as well. We have congestive heart failure and difficulty breathing. Now myocarditis can occur alongside pericarditis, so you do have some overlap in the symptoms of myocarditis and pericarditis. There are various ways to help you diagnose myocarditis, and since myocarditis results in inflammation and injury of the heart, there are various markers of myocardial damage, and that includes troponin or creatine kinase cardiac isoenzymes, and these would be elevated in cases of myocarditis. Another method is just using an ECG, so you can see from this diagram here, and you'll have diffuse T-wave inversions with a saddle-shaped ST segment elevations, which you can see in this diagram here. It's also very similar in pericarditis as well. Uh, and another way is that you can do a biopsy of the myocardium. So you take a small tissue sample of the myocardium and you will send it to a pathologist and in cases of myocarditis, there will be presence of edema, inflammatory infiltrate, so you'll see a lot of uh, lymphocytes and macrophages. The treatment methods for myocarditis involve certain medications like digoxin and diuretics, which help for the heart failure. Uh, in other cases, uh, cardiac function can be supported with use of inotropes like melrinone in the acute phase and ACE inhibitors can also be given as well. In some cases, systemic corticosteroids have also been given and in much severe cases, surgery is also done with left ventricular assist devices and heart transplantation may also be done as well.